Hi everyone, in this video we have a function from x to y. x is a non-empty set, and we have y is a topological space, so tau is a topology on y. And we're going to prove that this new set here, tau sub 1, actually defines a topology on capital X. So to be a topology, there's basically three conditions. The entire space and the empty set have to be in your tau 1. Whenever you take uh, any union of elements in tau 1, it also has to be an element in tau 1, or tau sub 1. And whenever you take any finite number of elements in tau 1, you have to have the intersection to also be an element of tau 1. So tau 1 contains all unions of its elements and all finite intersections of its elements, and it contains the empty set and the whole space. Let's go through it very carefully, and we'll just we'll do each condition just one at a time. So 1. So the first condition is that tau 1 contains the entire space x and the empty set. So let's see how we can somehow use the definition of tau 1 to show that capital X is in here. So note that y is in tau because tau is a topology on y, so it contains the whole space. So note y is an element of tau. Okay, So that means that f inverse of y this is exactly what it means for f inverse of y to be in tau 1. So this is in tau 1, or tau sub 1. But that's actually equal to capital X. So capital X is equal to that. right? This is the inverse image of y. This is the set of all of the elements in capital X that gets sent to y. By definition, every single one gets sent to y. So this is in tau sub 1. So that checks off the list. We have that capital X is in tau sub 1. Now we have to show the empty set is there. We'll note the empty set is in tau because tau is a topology on y. So the inverse image of the empty set is in tau 1 by definition of tau 1. But what is this? But this is equal to the empty set. This is the set of all elements that get mapped to the empty set. There are no elements that get mapped to the empty set, so it's empty. So this is tau sub 1. So we have that the entire space is in tau sub 1. The empty set is in tau sub 1, so the first condition is satisfied. So the second thing we have to show is that whenever we take any number of sets uh, from tau 1, the union of those sets is also in tau 1. So take any collection. of sets, say uh, O sub alpha, where alpha runs through some index set, and each sub alpha is an element of tau sub 1 for each alpha, right? So these are all elements in tau sub 1, uh, so this is true for alpha in I. I is some index set. You can't assume that it's finite. You just have to have an arbitrary collection of elements. Now we have to look at the union. So now, oh, oh. So what does it mean to be in tau 1? Let's use that. So then, for each alpha in I, so if it's in tau 1, we have that uh, there exists an A sub alpha in tau such that O sub alpha is equal to F inverse of A sub alpha. This is exactly what it means to be in this set, right? If you have an O in here, that means it's equal to this. So, so each O is equal to that for each alpha. So now we're going to look at the union of the O alphas. So then we look at the union of the O alphas as alpha runs through some index set. And we simply use this. So we rewrite it, we rewrite it as follows. This is the inverse image of A sub alpha. You can use the fact that the union distributes over these. So this is the inverse image of the union of the A sub alphas as alpha runs through some index set. This is something from set theory. And this is an element in tau. So where this union, this union belongs to tau. This is because tau is a topology and these are elements of tau. So it's closed under arbitrary union, so this will be in tau. So we have that um, this is equal to 
f inverse of some set in tau, that means that this is in tau one, right? That's, that's exactly what it means to be in tau one, right? If we can write this as f inverse of something in tau, see, f inverse of something in tau, that's our, that's our a in the definition of tau, of tau one. So this means that the union is an element of tau one. We're almost done. Now we just have to do the same thing for intersections. So let's go ahead and do that. So step three, we get to take a finite intersection. So take any, uh, I'll just use uh, O1 to ON in tau one. What does that mean? Then there exists A sub one to A sub N such that we have O sub I equal to F inverse of A sub I for each I. So for I equals one to N. So now we have to consider the intersection. It's exactly the same thing, right? So except here you're taking a finite intersection, whereas in the previous case we had an infinite, possibly infinite union. We, we can't say if it's infinite or finite, it's just a union. So now we'll look at the intersection. So then we'll take the intersection of these bad boys, and it's a finite one. Let's go to n of O sub i, and this is equal to the intersection as i runs from, run to, runs from 1 to n of this. Same thing, we can bring it out of the intersections from set theory. This is the intersection as i runs from 1 to n of a sub i. And same thing uh, where this bad boy is in tau. So this intersection here is an element in tau because tau is a topology on y and all of these are elements of tau. So it's closed under finite intersections. So that means that this is equal to this, where this is an element of tau. That's precisely what it means to be in tau one. So this bad boy here is in tau sub one. And that completes the proof. We showed that this contains X, this contains the empty set, it's closed under arbitrary unions of its elements, and it's closed under finite intersections of its elements. Therefore, it is a topology on capital X. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.